Hello and welcome to my garden and the dinosaurs who live there. Long time no see. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sorry I've not been posting many videos recently. Uh, I've been just so, so busy. Um, I think everybody is actually. There's there's um, a lot of the folk I follow on YouTube. Um, uh, you know, I subscribe to their channels. A lot of those um, have slowed up their video production. Um, and I think a lot of that is to do with the fact that the garden at the moment, everyone's madly, you know, harvesting things and tidying things up and getting more things planted out and so on. And to be fair, I'm doing a little bit of that, i.e. Excuse quail. Um, I'm harvesting and tidying things up, but I'm not really doing much prep for, for planting, for growing things over the autumn and the winter. And um, that's what I want to talk to you about. <clears throat> Before I show you around the garden, because I've not done a garden tour for ages, so um, let's say this is my August garden tour, even though it's just at the beginning of September. Um, I'm in a position now where I'm trying to change the garden quite radically because um, we're going to be putting the house on the market in the spring and moving somewhere, hopefully, um, a bit more rural with a bit more garden space. Yes, yeah, so I've got to get everything ship shape in Bristol fashion so that it's very attractive to potential purchasers. Excuse the noise. That noise that you hear um, are the little boy quail in there. That's them, the equivalent of their um, crows. You know, it doesn't, it's not as mad as a, and, and loud as a chicken crow. But um, at the moment, there's three little boys sharing a, a pen and they are, yeah, they're making a bit of a noise. <laughs> so excuse that. Uh, you might even be able to see them. There. Um, yeah, so three boy quails uh, left from the original hatch that I had. I had four boy quails and one's going to a new home. So I've still got three and I think I'm going to call them Curly, Larry and Mo. <laughs> <laughs> After the Three Stooges, the young people in the audience won't know who the Three Stooges are, uh, just Google it. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, so I'm going to put the house in the market and the way that I have the garden right now, um, it's very high maintenance and I, I love it, but even I'm, I struggle at times to, to keep on top of things. Uh, it's not necessarily going to make it attractive for potential purchasers because you want a garden to be a lot less cluttered, nice and clean and tidy, so that they can they can visualise what they would do with it. And one of the things they might choose to do with this garden, or at least with part of it, is to extend the house um, into part of it. So that's hopefully a nice, um, attractive part of um, the the package, if you like. But yeah, so as well as getting everything sorted indoors, um, I'm going to get have to get everything sorted outdoors in the garden. So as the, the veg is harvested, everything's going to get tidied up and put away, so you know, I, I, I um, do a lot of growing. <laughs> Excuse me, wasp, get away. Oh. oh, I'm such a wuss. It's because it's in my face. Get away, wasp. I am still here, I'm just behind the camera now. <laughs> Dum-de-dum. I am still here. Oh, go away, wasp. Jeez, oh. Oh, it's found me again. Mm. Right. It went right for my face. Cautiously sits back down again. 
Right, so I keep bees now. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mind bees, but wasps at this time of year are nasty little beggars. And that one just came straight from my face. Almost went in my mouth. No, I don't like that at all. <laughs> anyway, I might run again if it arrives back. <sighs> oh, I'm embarrassed. Never mind. So, where was I? Yeah, so as I harvest, the, yeah, I do a lot of container growing. And as I harvest things, uh, I'm going to be emptying the pots, either putting the compost somewhere else or, well, putting the compost somewhere else actually. Um, a bit of it um, I will use to um, pot on some of the plants that I want to take with me. But I need to be very careful because I, there's lots of plants I really would like to take with me. Um, although it depends on what, the, what my new garden's like. But for the plants that I would like to keep a hold of, I'll keep them in pots and try and have them somewhere nice and neat and tidy. Anyway, so yeah, so big job tidying this, decluttering it and um, making it as open and inviting as possible. I'm also uh, going to invest in lots of spring bulbs so that um, there's lots of daffodils and crocuses and um, tulips and so on because I think, it, I'm not quite sure when the house will go on the market but I'm imagining it will be if I, if I can, or if we can, maybe March, April time. And so it'd be lovely to have all the, you know, lots of, of bulbs around to give it that nice spring colour. So it's sad in a way, well, it's, it is sad in a way because I, I've built this garden from the ground up. Literally, this was all just green grass, all just a field or part of a field. And everything that's in it, I have put in it. So. Um, anything that's in the wrong place is my fault. Anything, it's, I mean, it, I put, spent the first five years planting lots of things to try and fill up the garden and then um, the next five years trying to keep it under control because things sort of grow and expand. Uh, and now I'm just at the point, even if I, if I was staying here, I would ha be thinking about doing a bit of a, a restructure anyway, because it's just, you know, it, it's got to the point now where it really needs to take it in hand. So yes, that is, um, bear that in mind when I take you around because it is a bit of a, it's a bit of a jungle out here, um, but you'll gradually see things getting pulled down and put away and, and, and things getting uh, decluttered and maybe looking a little bit less like the garden that I love and maybe the garden that you love if you, if you subscribe to the channel. But it's all for a good cause and it's all very, very exciting. So, yeah, um, now that I've um, rambled on for a while and had my little interlude running away from the wasp, <laughs> which seems to have gone now, um, let me take you around the garden and show you what it looks like just now. So this is Tomato Red Robin and I grew this last year and got some tomatoes, but this year well, as you can see, I've got loads and loads and I've already taken lots off. So, um, yeah, I've got to be able to recommend that this one this year. Last year it was a bit sort of, hmm, but this year, wow, absolutely wow. Look at them all and they're actually very tasty. So quite large cherry tomatoes. And I'm lucky because up to now I haven't had blight at all. I think this is just die back I don't think it's I don't think it's blight as such so yeah so my potato potatoes my tomatoes are doing great this tomato is called red profusion it's a like a hanging basket type although I put this one in a pot accidentally um, yeah I'm getting a fair number of again quite large cherry tomatoes some still to to ripen but um, Yep, you can see there's quite a lot there and I've already had some off this plant, so this isn't bad either. I think the Red Robin's done better than this one this year, but uh, I can't say I'm disappointed. This was just a single plant. This is a, um, a tomato plant that a friend of mine gave me. It's Tigerella. And you can see that I've got fruits. This one's starting to ripen which is nice the rest are pretty green but coming along 
and considering I'm growing them outside in Scotland, I'm not disappointed yet. This is sun gold. This was a grafted plant that I bought and I've had loads and loads of sun golds off this. And you can see there's plenty more to come. Um, as I go further down though, you'll see that I've been a bit lax and some of the fruit has fallen off and wasted, unfortunately. But I've had, well, you can just, just see <laughs> how many um, tomatoes off the trusses that I've had. I've had loads and loads. So very pleased with this. And of course, sun gold are just sweet and scrummy. I more often than not eat them off the plants. But actually, I've had so many this year, I've had to take them indoors, even off this single plant. I grew market more cucumbers this year and some years they do well and some years they don't but this year they have done brilliantly the leaves are looking a bit moth-eaten now but you can see I've still got lots of fruits and myself and the quail are enjoying those with the chickens to a degree but the quail love uh love uh cucumbers chopped up they get really tore in this is another one of the market more. I've just harvested a cucumber. There's another one ready to harvest. It's all going a bit way all over the place. But yeah, I love market more. Tastes great and grow really well outdoors, usually. I've got another little one there. Uh, can you see it through there? And I've got another one plant, I think. The Rudbeckia are still doing amazing. I mean, look at that for colour. Now, these are in pots on the deck, making the deck nice and cluttered. But um, in a bed, these would look even more awesome. They seem to quite like it here in the, the west of Scotland for some reason. And look at them. They're just glorious. What a ping of colour you get from them. Grown from seed, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And you get these and they keep cutting and cutting and taking them indoors and they keep coming. And the bees love them. If I swing round here past the messy dahlias. I've got some more of this side. Yay. So fantastic. Love, love, love Rudbeckia. Highly recommend them. There's more lettuce in the go here and I can't remember what the variety is. I did label it, but the Sharpie has <laughs> washed off. Um, so I just did four rows. As you can see, I haven't actually, I haven't actually um, split them up. So I probably should do that, but I might just choose to, to grow them like this and I'll harvest loads to go into, well, my salads and also for the, the quail. Hello, Oliver. What is it? Hello. Ollie. Psst. Hi. Ah, uh -huh. yes. No show without punch. I've got three hanging baskets with petunias in that I bought at plug plants. And I might have four actually. <laughs> uh, and they're still looking pretty good. Giving some nice colour. Look at this one with the the double frilly ones. It's nice to get a, a pop of colour around the garden. And talking of which, there we go, some mess uh, here. Courgette plant that is probably just about done. And then the chickens have been in digging in the dirt. But what I meant to show you is this. Look at these gladioli. Now, I think I put four in each of these pots but I've only really got a couple of flowers in one and one in the others, but look at them. Look at this. What a beautiful color of purple. Amazing. And then there's a lovely white one. I think there's another purple one to come, is there? Oh no, maybe not. Maybe there's just one in each. Sad, but they're making up for it in their strikingness, if that's a word. So there's a white one and then we've got a peach one. And this peach one is, oh, about five and a half foot tall. Well, no five foot tall, actually, because it's, it's on a stone. So that one's not open yet, but it's coming. So they're amazing.
And then we've got this mix of dahlias here. Some crazy looking ones. Just floating above the foliage. Looking quite nice. So, Berlotti beans been growing over the arch and uh, looking very, very pretty. Yeah. So here we go, up one side of the arch. Hey, <laughs> lovely ready purple Berlotti beans. And then, oh, let's see if you can get there, dangling over the arch. And down the other side. Very nice. Not masses because there only was, I think, three plants on either side. It looks very nice, very pretty. So very pretty as, very, as well as edible. And here's the last one of the cucumber plants. Um, it's not got any fruit on it just now, but it certainly has had fruit and you can see there's more forming. Supery dupery. Yeah, if you're growing cucumbers outside, I highly recommend market more. And here we have some beans. Beans, beans, beans. Right, what are these? What are these? Jackpot. Hang on. Keep forgetting. Dwarf Runner Jackpot Mix. Dwarf Runner Jackpot Mix. So yeah, I've had, I think, three harvests off this so far. And more to come. If I stand back though, you can see that it's all looking absolutely crazy mental on the patio. Because da, 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 da. one of the reasons I have been so lax with my videos is I've been building this. I'll show you it around the front. This is my new quail run, almost ready to open for business. And that in, in that location, I did have beans and sunflowers and uh, a variety of other pots and things. So they are now here. But once I harvest, I'm going to be tidying everything away in my quest to have a, an uncluttered garden for putting the house in the market. Uh, and that involves making sure that this nice patio that we have here is actually free of lots of plants, most plants, and looks like a patio and is a nice seating area because we do have the wooden chairs here. There's a bench and a chair and a coffee table and another chair, all freshly painted this year and all ready to sit down and luxuriate on. But uh, you're surrounded by a mass of unruly plants. <laughs> Oh, there's the boys, Larry, Curly and Mo. They're still in their little um, little cage here, but do not fret. Once we get the main flock of quail in here, they'll be going into the big rabbit hutch. And we also still have, where are you baby? She's hiding. Where is she? She'll be behind that bush. There she is. Uh, little Eliza with the limp, who I don't think is ever going to get back in with others. But what I'm going to do is give her her own Des Red, Des Res at the end of this huge run so that she can be next to the other quail. The hollyhocks are going over now. I probably could have kept them going a bit longer if I'd been a bit more... Um, rigorous with my watering but they were glorious while they lasted and through this arch we've got some more lovely gladioli look at these look at these again in a pot we've got three stunning I love this colour the cerise with some lighter pink centres. Absolutely glorious. 
You know, when you stand back here, yeah, you've got a mass of greenery, which is okay, but you've got pops of colour around and about as well, which I like. And if I just go around here, we did have a lot of colour there with the hollyhocks, but that's just died back. Oh, hello. And we have a little boy here wanting attention, don't we? Yes, we do, young man. We're down by the big tree that whose days is numbered, whose days are numbered. This is the diseased sycamore that's going to have to come down soon. And I've had confirmation from the council that I can do it. So I think it's October time for a big tree's coming down. But down underneath it, I've got this ever increasing in size clump of echinops. And they are prickly, but pretty. I've still got uh, celery to harvest. I've harvested half of this lot. This is the sort of self-blanching one. And there's more self-blanching over there. I really need to get out. And then over here by the sweet peas, lovely smell we've got the the pink tinged one the blush another little patch of rudbeckia zinging out here from underneath the little kamarnik willow and next door this budlia that's pretty much overflowering now and underneath, we've got some sedum. And these flowers go a nice pinky purple colour. You can see it's starting to happen. So there you have it. That's a, a look around the garden, um, end of August, beginning of September. Still lots happening uh, and lots to do for me to get this all tidied away and neat and tidy for prospective buyers. Anyway, there'll be more than that as the months go on and we get into the new year. But for now, if you have enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and um, I will talk to you again very, very soon. Bye bye for now. Bye.